Hello, I'm Sydney. And I'm Melanie. And this is Drontaneous. Do you want to know what you're going to draw today? Oh boy, what? The dice have spoken. You have to make a D&D &D character. Okay. Um, the character is lawful neutral. All right. They are a half-orc. Okay. And they are a rogue. So. Lawful neutral half-orc rogue. Yep. Have at it. I see, I see. Good luck. Any, uh, any thoughts going in? Any designs you're going to base your character off of? I honestly don't know, because I usually don't play rogues. It's fitting that I set up my colors to be greens. Hey. Shout out to Amy and her character Gallus. Oh, yeah. You're not going to draw Gallus, though. Uh, yeah. Gallus is not a rogue. Oh, no, Gallus is not a rogue. Gallus is a ranger. Gallus is the buffest ranger. She is the best at stairs. Um... So while please tell please tell the stair story. The stair story? God, I can barely remember the stair story. All I remember is so our party was in jail as you start out any campaign. Um, they ended up going to a academy to get their job assignment. Essentially, they were bailed, and it's like almost community service. <laughs> I guess it's one way of thinking of it. It was, um, you guys got bailed out, and the guy was like, I have a friend who's willing to take you. You just gotta, yeah. like, do some stuff for him. Uh, and and so it wasn't shady. They had to... There were no elevators, which is a shame, and I think that is the best thing that Griff McElroy has ever gifted Dungeons & Dragons, is elevators. Um, but they had to climb, like, 20 stories worth of stairs, and Gallus rolled, or rather Amy rolled a nat 20, and Gallus sprinted up those stairs. Boy, is she good at stairs. Um, and she continued to be good at stairs for all the other games we played. Pretty much Gallus was like the only reason y'all survived. This is true. Um, but to be fair, most of us were brand new to the game. Um, but anyways, what do we want to talk about today, Sydney? While you, while you draw an orc, half orc, half orc. He looks uh, delightful. I, oh, I like him a lot. Cool. I'm very much of the mindset. He's like, I shouldn't steal the thing. <laughs> but oh my goodness, yes. Kind of like, kind of like Scott from Monster Prom is the vibe I'm, I'm feeling. Oh like yeah, one hundred percent. It's like, I shouldn't do this, but... I shouldn't do this, but my friends are egging me on, <laughs> and, it and, could, I am... and I could use it for charity. Oh, what a, what a, what a good guy. Yeah, because we are... Well, we're lawful neutral. What is... So, the whole alignment thing. I have a somewhat decent grasp of it, but... So, lawful is you obey the law. Yeah. Or a set of laws. It doesn't necessarily have to be the law. And then chaotic is anarchy, essentially. You're just like, whatever, I do what I want. Um, but then neutral, so that is you don't skew either good or evil. You're just kind of the, the, the straight and narrow. Well, not straight and narrow. You're, you're the middle ground. Yeah. I've only ever successfully played a chaotic good character. <laughs> That's like the general what everyone plays oh, is a chaotic good. I cannot be mean. I could probably do lawful good if I really wanted to, but that doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> it, it only works if you have a good party for it. Uh, thank you for giving him nip-nops. I mean... It's necessary. It is very necessary. You know who else, what other character this delightful, delightful half orc reminds me of? Go on. Mashev. Oh, Mashev. Mashev is such a good boy. We'll have to get you to draw him at some point. I don't know how with the draw tables that you set up. I mean, we could also just like have him set up as, like, not everything has to be dice rolls. But Sydney, what other, what, why other reason would it be called Drontaneous? <laughs> If not to put you at the whim of the dice. I mean, to draw all the things. God, I'm just having the worst time figuring out what to do with his arms. 
I just want to draw this nice buff body. I, I, I can definitely see you're very fixated on the torso. I am really proud of this torso. It's a good torso. I don't know, maybe just have flexing a little gun show. Maybe hands on hips. That's where I, what I'm going for. <laughs> anyway. Oh yeah, we're supposed to be talking about something. Yeah, let's talk more Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. We both like Dungeons. We both and like Dungeons and Dragons. Despite we, the fact that we never get to play. We never get to play, and I think that's mostly just because it's so hard getting a bunch of adults to play a game on a consistent basis. Yeah, it um, really is. I don't know what should we talk about. I was gonna say let's talk about Fairy Fire, but we already talked about Fairy Fire on the show. Uh, How about? Oh, no. oh dear. Oh no. Oh no. I'm, dro I'm dropping my pencil. You have your pen? I got it. it? It's yeah. all fine. Alright. How about... Talking about DMing games. Oh god, I'm the worst head. <laughs> I mean, you're... You're the only one who's DM'd in our circle of friends consistently. So I That's because no one you. wants to do it. <laughs> it's very much a... Well, actually, to be honest, I do prefer DMing. Yeah, I was gonna say, you started figuring out that you prefer DMing over playing a character. I do, yeah. Now, why, uh, why is that? Um, I think because I kind of struggle to pay attention when I'm the player. Like, you've probably noticed this when we play video games. I have a very hard time staying focused. Good old ADD vibes. Uh, but, uh, as the dungeon master, I have, like, a, a set, like, list of things that could happen, mm -hmm. and I really just let you guys do all the work, and yeah. then I just play off of that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm s slowly coming to enjoy that more. So there's more of a... you have more of a hand, essentially, in the game, where, like, you're engaged more. Yes. Whereas when you're playing as a, as a player in the game, you obviously don't get to stand front and center all the time. You have to share the spotlight. Yeah, and... Depending on your players, it doesn't always work out super well. It can well. be very challenging. Yeah. I would say I've only DM'd once or twice. And you and I have different strengths when it comes to DMing. We have different styles, different strengths. Um, I would probably say I am not the greatest at improv. Uh, I, I like my... You like things to be set in stone. I like my... I like having a game plan and then being able to mostly follow through the game plan. I think I am flexible enough where if they don't go exactly where I want them to go, I am able to thread back in the quest hook that I was trying to get them to do. So like eventually they're going to do what I wanted them to do so I can progress my story along. Um, I like trying to do more long form storytelling, but I think It'd be better if I tried to do more episodic uh, vignettes, sort of. I agree. I actually kind of prefer one-and-done games rather than long, continuous games. It would be nice to do a long, continuous game, but again, it's really hard to like find a group of people who you can actually sit down every week or every other week for a year and slam out an actual like long campaign arc. Like, it's easier when you have an office job, and, like, everyone has office jobs. Like, as it is now, like, you and I and, like, our friends that play, like, in person, like, we all have fucking retail jobs. Yeah, it is hard to coordinate. It's impossible. And not, to, not to mention, like, energy levels on that day and whether or not you really want to sit down and... And of course, our friends have to travel to us because we're not going to be able to take the bus out to them. Because we don't have a car. A car, and it would take a long time. But well, eventually, someday. someday, someday. What is your favorite thing to do as a dungeon master? Like, I, I think deceiving my players. It's very much, it's a joke amongst my players, like, to the point I've got a mug and a picture from them that says, Are you sure? Because, like, I will, because part of what I want them to do is to really think. And, uh, so it's, it's always fun for me that even for mundane decisions, I ask them, I was like, okay, well, are you sure you want to do that? 
Even though, like, it has no weight on what they're doing. I just want to watch them squirm a little bit. I can say it is pretty funny. It's hilarious, because, like, then they doubt themselves, and they're like, oh, wait, what if what if there's some, like, horrible booby trap set up? And I'm just like, hey. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's very much deception as, like... It's very much just like, I just want you guys to like think your choices through, especially when you're doing stupid shit. Or like commit to it. Or commit like, to double it. Double yeah. down and commit and be like, yeah, I'm doing this. Yeah, for like comedy, like just like be, be fun, have fun with it. I am watching you slowly draw this very, very handsome half orc, and I'm just imagining this chest is like sweating. It's a mimic. <laughs> I was gonna say the chest is sweating because, oh damn, this robe be hot. It's a mimic, and it's definitely like, I would let that guy crack. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm like, <laughs> I hope his his lockpicking role is just a charisma check against this mimic. <laughs> and the mimic's like, yep, sure, you can be inside me. You got it. Oh. I don't know, I'm 100, I like this guy already. Like He's delightful. Okay, so let's just dive into the head cannon a bit for for this character. Do you have a name yet? I do not. I'm actually really bad with naming characters. Well, I can handsome guy can, can do for now. Uh, what? Because rogues are all sorts of archetypes. What kind of archetype do you see him falling under? Hmm. I could see it being like he didn't want to like fill out the stereotype of what half orcs are. Because, like, you know, half-orcs are usually, like, warriors, barbarians, and whatnot. And he was just like, but... I think... I, I think my headcanon is he wanted to be a bard. Aww! But he doesn't have magical skill. And his voice just isn't that good. So, love, like, he just couldn't cut it. I love the hilarity of half-orc bards. I think that it's so stupid and funny. But, like... He, ended, he ends up, like, traveling with... I'm gonna say he's part of a traveling circus. Uh huh. Oh, nice. Can I make a request? Absolutely. In the design? Can you give him a crop top? I love you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. The pants can either be high waisted or low rise. It's up to you. But I'm just looking at this and going like, this man needs a crop top. And I'm like, I know, I know that little. Those are like crease marks marks in the fabric, but I just kept thinking, no, that's that would be a great place for a crop top. <laughs> Gotta show off them abs. It's a crop top of plus two charisma. <laughs> 100%. This should definitely just be a prompt we do more. It's just rolling up D&D characters. Are you enjoying yourself? I am. It, it, just, it just makes me miss Dungeons and Dragons. It's a shame that you can't just play it with two people. Right. <laughs> like we, Why couldn't we be in a polyamorous relationship? <laughs> we, uh, we did a test run on Roll20 where I basically made you walk through an encounter so that we could just try out the age system. It was, um, we were doing a Dragon Age. Oh uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I can, I can totally see how a two-person... Uh, tabletop game a la like Dungeons and Dragons and when it really worked out very well. Yeah. But uh, I wish. Oh, if only. If only. Because like you can't even really play with like two players in a DM. It really like it feels like three is the the sweet spot. Yeah. Uh, I mean ideally game, it should be more but. Game people please get on that and make more small party games because I'm dying. We don't have friends. <laughs> we don't have friends. We're busy adults. Oh. Hence why we just role play. Yeah. You know what we could do? And you know, a thing that never occurred to me until now, like people do role play with dice, dice mechanics. Like that is a thing. I wonder if there's like... Yeah, but remember how bad I am with rolling dice and how poorly it always goes for me? I mean, that's why you have... Uh, I mean, like, for real, as a dungeon master, I kind of make up my rolls half the time because, like... I was I, gonna say, you, your dice are pretty shitty. Yeah, so. I have shit luck with dice, so I just, at this point, go by what would be more fun narratively. Oh my god. Well, now, Sydney, nobody's gonna want to be a player in a game with you anymore. But, you, but like, I make interesting games, though. Yeah, that's true. 
I had you guys going with that fucking chicken. <gasps> that was good. So Corin's just gonna be so dejected whenever we play again. So in short, I had the party going to rescue a nobleman's daughter, and the nobleman's daughter is actually a chicken, but he didn't want to tell anyone that he loves this chicken so much because he didn't think anybody would. There help were like him. there were cultist vibes, and I was just like, oh my god. The cultist polymorph, the daughter, <laughs> stole her away. It makes so much sense. And my favorite part was when you guys were discussing, well, when you kill a polymorph creature, it turns back to normal. And I'm like internally sweating because I'm like, oh God, they're going to kill her. And I'm just going to have to be like, well, that's a dead chicken now. I was kind of hoping you would, to be honest. And, but then eventually you figured out it's just a chicken. Well, I mean... I decided not to cast whatever spell would have ganked the chicken because I'm like, I was, I wasn't certain that it would actually turn back. So I was like, you know what? Let's just, let's just be cautious and not hit the chicken with like an earthquake spell. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it was like an AOE. It would have been the one time you would have rolled like a critical hit <laughs> and just, just killed everyone in that room. So we are... We're about time. Yeah, we're about out of time. I really enjoy this character. I do too. I definitely... I think you need to flush him out. Yeah. Just flush him out. Flush, flush him, him out. Flush him out. Yep. More flesh, please. Yes. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> thank you for joining us for this episode of Drontanius, and we'll see you next time. Hey everyone, it's Melanie. Thank you for listening to this episode of Drontanius. If you liked what you saw, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have suggestions for future topics, feel free to share them in the comments section below. You can find more of Sydney's art on Twitter and Instagram at CC Luna Art, and you can support her on Patreon and Ko-fi at CC Luna.